Welcome back to WCCF Tech TV everyone and this is the Radeon Vega 64. Got a little bit of touch with the black back plate and a little black retention plate which is very similar to a card that comes out next week which will be succeeding this card and that is the Radeon 7. So we're talking about a 60 compute unit card with 16 gigabytes of D whoa, HBM2 on the 7 nanometer process node. So the first consumer grade gaming graphics card on 7 nanometer but performance. That's what we want to talk about, performance. See, AMD at CES showed this card performing on par with an RTX 2080 and three titles. Admittedly, there are three titles that AMD does perform really well in, but if you're going to show your performance, that's the way you'd want to show it. I mean, that's how I would want to do it, wouldn't you? But with the card coming out in the coming days, we're talking February 7th, and this is the 29th of January. So, man, these guys couldn't keep this lid on this one very long. But we do have some performance numbers thanks to the man himself, Tum Apisak, over on Twitter. Now, instead of just shooting these numbers at you and saying, this is a score, this is a score, this is a score, I did compile it into a graph utilizing the data from existing cards that we have. So the Vega 64, RTX 2080, uh, GTX 1080, that's in there, and the GTA, or RTX 2080 Ti, that's in there just for reference points. And just as usual before I start getting people screaming about it, no, there is not a 1080 Ti. We never got one in. I never, well, I never got one in for my test suite. So at this point, it's kind of hard to justify going out and buying a six, $700 graphics card just to slot in here. So 2080 performs very close to a 1080 Ti in some cases, but not others like Resident Evil 2. Um, anyway, that's all other topics. Let's jump into the actual results themselves. So we're going to start things off with Fire Strike, and these are all just the graphics score. So if you see the score and you're comparing it to your overall score, that's not going to be the same thing. So you have to compare it straight graphics score. So each one of these tests has a separate graphics, physics, and combined score, except for time spot. It just does physics, yeah, physics and graphics, which is a much better way to do it in my opinion. But in Fire Strike, we see the Radeon 7 slotting in between the Vega 64 and just behind the RTX 2080 at 1080p resolution, which is about what we expected to see. However, we move things down to Fire Strike Extreme where we move things up to 1440p and we see a little bit of a different story. We see the uh, Radeon 7 come out ahead of the RTX 2080 in that one and that's, well, thanks to the increased bandwidth on the memory and the ROP count that the uh, Vega, the Radeon 7 has, which is still the same as the Vega 64, whereas a lot of people thought earlier it was going to be doubled, but it's not. It's still the same count as the Vega 64. So Fire Strike Ultra, where that bottleneck is alleviated completely, we see the Radeon 7 carry a even wider gap ahead of the RTX 2080. So a pretty big jump over the Vega 64, even with less compute units. So maybe they've got something going on here. However, DX12 is kind of the thing, and Time Spy is a point of contention for a lot of people, and I get that, and this chart is probably going to show, uh, or give rather, people even more of a reason to find a point of contention with it. We see here, um, well, Radeon 7 is quite a bit behind the RTX 2080 in this test, according to the results that Tum Apisak has shown us. So, right there in the middle, we see it considerably behind the RTX 2080, but considerably ahead of the Vega 64. So what does that mean for the overall performance of the graphics card? It means that, again, we're going to have to wait and see just how it performs in games because you can win in a synthetic by a huge margin and still not really hit it in the games or you could actually lose in a synthetic mar uh, benchmark and come out really good in a gaming benchmark. I think you're going to see games like Resident Evil 2, which we just tested, if you, the Radeon card, in my opinion, is going to do fantastic in that game. And we'll probably see the same thing over in Forza and see it in the new, the upcoming Devil May Cry 5, since it's using the RE engine that the Resident Evil 2 did. But I think the typical games where you see the Vega 64 fall to the 2080, I think you're going to see the same story with the Vega 7 and the 2080 because that's they're very similar well the 2080 is not a similar architecture but vega it's vega radian 7 is vega so scaled up it's gonna be pretty easy to kind of predict where it's gonna fall 
but it will actually be really fun to see where that memory bandwidth really comes into play. So definitely stay tuned. Um, don't think you're going to see a review of the card from our site, but we're definitely going to bring you the most that we can leading up to and following the launch, and hopefully we'll have one on our test bench to add into our game review performance. Uh, so this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next one.